sleeping giant of the church. The powerhouse of the body of Christ. The, the, the power source of almighty things to be done in the name of Jesus Christ. To be done through the hands and feet and mouths of the church. Personal lives changed. Marriage is healed through the church. But this isn't a situation of man. This isn't First Baptist Church, Grace Mont, Blake Taylor, the pastor, and Gene and Jerry and Wayne, the deacons, and music director David Adams, and piano player Beverly Adams, and organ player Juanita, and sound man Glenn all the way in the back. No, this is Jesus. This is the Holy Spirit using his people with their individual gifts and talents and personalities and things that were being knit together in their mother's womb. Layers of fabric of character and nature that were being knit in a womb are now coming to life in that believer's heart now that they've grown up and given their life to Christ, became a part of a church, began to serve, and now find themselves smack dab in the middle of a ministry. That's what we're doing here, and that's why we're here. So if you're a guest here, first let me tell you welcome, and let me tell you this, um, you're safe here to be exactly who you are, to come from whatever background you come from, um, to be in whatever condition you're in, because though many of the people around you look pretty, um, we're all broken here. So you're free to be you here. Also, if, uh, if, if, if you're wondering what's in store today, let me just, uh, spoil alert, I have no idea. <laughs> the Spirit has rocked me this morning, guys. So I'm just going to start by prayer. I'm going to start by prayer, and I'm going to start by confession that I've had four sermons for today so far. <laughs> four, four sermons. I say that like it sounds all, I've had like four pieces of paper with chicken scratch all over it that have been crumbled up. You know, different hotel uh, pads that have stuff written down on it that have been crumbled up. Then I thought, well, if I'll get real official and type out my sermon, then God will let me preach it. And so I'd type it up, and I'd get done, and, and I'd be looking at it, and I'd be like, this is nothing. I mean, this is nothing, God. Where is the power And what you want me to say? I know what you want me to say, but where's the power? And the Spirit showed me the power's in His Word. So uh, I don't know what we're going to preach about today, but we're going to get in His Word. I know that much. Let's pray. God, Woe is me, for I'm a man of unclean lips. Father, have mercy upon my soul. Because I know it, it, it's you who I talk to. It's you, God, creator, God, savior, God, father, God. And every time, every Sunday morning, every Sunday school class, every Sunday night, Every Bible study, every hymn, every Bible verse read, Lord, every time I get a little bit closer to you, Father, I see your beauty and I see how ugly I am. So please, God, right now, right here, in this church, on this stage, may there be less of me and more of Jesus Christ. And may your spirit fill this place. May your spirit fall fresh upon your church, your body, as we search your will for this community, for the surrounding area. God, we love you, we praise you, we glorify you, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Does anybody have anything to testify about? Let's give God a hand this morning. Amen. Gosh, God is good. God is good. All right. So, um, I never was the good at the God is good all the time, all the time. I always messed it up. I was like, all the time, I want pizza. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, so here's, here's where we're at, guys. This is what I do know. I'm not saying that I have no idea what we're going to say. What I'm saying is God has made it very clear to me that what I thought I was going to say is not what needs to be said. 
And the topic of, on, on the table here today is, is spiritual giftedness, grace gifts, manifestations of the Spirit in the believer, the child of God, through various forms. In this last 16 weeks, guys, do you realize, do you realize we've been in spiritual gifts like two seasons worth of Seinfeld time? Like we've been here a while. We've invested ourselves in this study. We took, we took our text seriously that said, therefore, brothers, concerning spiritual gifts, I do not want you to be ignorant. And you know what we said as a church? We said we don't want to be ignorant concerning spiritual gifts. So yes, it was tedious. Yes, some Sundays it was boring in my, in my eyes because it wasn't the, the, the big extravagant things that I wanted to talk about. But we took each of those 20 gifts every Sunday and we broke them down what they are, what they look like in Scripture, who were examples in Scripture that exemplified that gift, what that gift accomplishes, what character traits a person might exhibit that has that gift, how to use that gift in the church, how that gift is practically seen in the church. You see the gift of shepherding and teaching and prophecy practically done in the church by sound biblical teachers and pastors. You see the gift of encouragement and the gift of, of service and giving uh, done practically in the church uh, through the, the role of an usher sitting at the door welcoming you. And so we talked about all that. And we put all the gifts into, into four or five categories, right? We said the first category were support gifts, gifts that get things done. Second category was sharing gifts, gifts that engage others. The next uh, category of gifts were speaking gifts, gifts that, 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 that ground people in God's word. Then we talked about supplemental gifts, gifts that come alongside other dominant gifts that make them more effective in grounding the church in the word. And then lastly, we talked about sign gifts. That was fun, wasn't it? We talked about what we believe concerning the sign gifts in the power of God. And here's what I walked away with. I don't know about what you walked away with. I've heard some stories. Well, our pastor believes in speaking in tongues. Well, hey, listen, I can sit up here and say I lost the keys to my Honda all day long. And if it's not of God, it doesn't matter. The truth is, if God so chooses to manifest his spirit in this church by calling someone to stand up and do something that we've never seen before, let me tell you something. Come, Jesus. Spirit, come. I want more of God. So I'm not bound by doctrine. I'm bound by the, by the word of God. And what I told you was that, that speaking in tongues were no longer a personally assigned gift, but people speak in tongues. We said the working of miracles was no longer a personally assigned gift, but working of miracles still happens. We said the interpretation of tongues was no longer a personal assigned gift, but when tongues are spoken, interpretation of tongues come. We said that, 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 that gifts of healing no longer are personally assigned to individuals like the apostles had, but people are healed. What does that tell us? It's all about the sovereign will of God and not at all about me. And that leads us all the way to where we're at now, and that's to wrap up, to close up this study. And if we're not careful, guys, we're going to put a pin in this and move on to the next thing and miss it. Miss it. This is what we're coming out of will be the engine that moves this church for the next five years. If these truths and principles are obeyed and practiced and applied in your life, it will be the very engine that fuels this church forward in the community. Or it'll be just a fun sermon series until the next one. So the first thing, how do we discover our gifts? How do we know what we're gifted with? The average Christian polled in this church right now probably would tell you, I have no idea. I have no idea. First of all, it's uncomfortable to talk about. First of all, you kind of feel like you're bragging when you start saying stuff like, well, I'm gifted with, you know, the gift of slenderness. But what we realize in our study, it's not about us. It's not about Blake's gift. It's about look at what the Spirit is in me. Look at how the Spirit has manifested itself in me. He's manifested himself in me with the gift of generosity. So I have the gift of generosity. 
how do I discover that? Well, I believe that the Bible is very clear to how a Christian practically discovers their spiritual gifts and their walk. Now, guys, I don't know if we're going to finish it uh, today. Matter of fact, I will go ahead and say we will not finish it today because there's just too much. But where we're headed is how do we discover, develop, and deploy our spiritual gifts in the church? How do I discover, develop, and deploy my spiritual gifts? The goal of our Christian life and our discovery process. Guys, I'm, I'm 30. How old am I? 30, 34? 34? 28, I think. I can't remember. But I mean, you know, I mean, it's not like, I mean, I'm not what society uh, deems old, okay? I don't get AARP mail yet. Some of you do. And I envy you. I got to stop and focus. But even though I'm not 66, even though I'm 33, I've made a lot of sinful choices in my life. I've sought the enemy. I've, I've lived longer for the enemy than I have for the God who created me. So, I have no time to waste. I have no time to waste. I need to know how to do this now. Why? Because if I don't get the power of God in my life, I will die. Why? Because apart from Christ, I can do no thing. I need him in my life. So how do I discover it? How do I get it? Activated and discovered. Well, the first thing I do, guys, any of y'all that went through Francis Chan's, um, I'm not promoting Francis Chan, or I'm not promoting Reformed Theology, so if you're watching our Facebook Live, please don't start making posts about Reformed Theology, because we'll just unfriend you. But anyways. But Francis Chan has this book on marriage that's brilliant. It's brilliant for its simplicity. It's You and Me Forever is the name of the book. And he says, the last thing you do when your marriage is falling apart is make your life about fixing your marriage. I mean, think about that. So counterintuitive, isn't it? The last thing I need to do when I'm trying to discover my spiritual gifts is put all of my attention and focus on discovering my spiritual gifts. The last thing I need to do when I'm trying to be a better dad is read the polls and read the books and listen to the podcasts and, and, and put my whole life around being a better dad. No saint, child of God, the last thing you need to do is take your eyes off of Jesus Christ. The first thing we do when we engage the process of discovering what God has gifted us in his grace is we place our eyes sternly upon the person of Christ. And we ground ourselves in his word. And then we live day after day focused upon him. Why? It's in him that all life flows. It's in him that grace has come to man. Remember in our, uh, I can't remember, what is it, our uh, Titus study. And in, in the end of chapter two, or chapter two, he says, for God's grace has appeared to all men, bringing salvation. It's through Christ the grace comes. Our eyes must be set on him. If you've got your uh, Bible, we didn't even do like the whole opening your Bible and stand up, you know, thing that we normally do. But that's all right, guys. I tell you what, me and my wife, and my brother here sat in this office back here before the service came up. And we said, God, forget what we thought. We want to do only what you want us to do today. And so buckle in. Uh, go to Ephesians. Book of Ephesians. Some of y'all are like, my pew don't have buckles. Sometimes I can't hear all the laughter from up here. So if y'all could, could laugh louder, that would be better. Turn to Ephesians chapter 4, and we're going to look at verses 15 through 16. The first step in spiritual discovery is found in putting our delight in life, 
completely centered upon Christ. The first step, because child, if you can't do that, you will not discover what God has in store for you. Ephesians chapter 4, and then let's read verses, um, let's read verses 15 and 16. If your body is able and you're willing, please stand in the honor of reading God's word. Yeah, I made you do it. 15 and 16. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into what? A better husband? Into a person who knows their gifts? Into a father? No, into him who is the head. Into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped. When each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. God, speak at the remainder of this service your truth. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Have a seat. Today, I'm going to give you the first two things I believe that Scripture tells us concerning the discovery process of our spiritual gifts. And you guys know it's been a journey for me too. Like I'm, I'm realizing what it is that God has in me. I mean, I, I've been saved um, for six years now. I mean, I've grown up around the church and, you know, I'm, I have lots of knowledge in my head. But when it comes down to, to the truth of God being hidden in my heart, I'm just now realizing how powerful God is. And so this journey has led me to a place to where I find myself daily saying, God, what is it? What have you given me, God? What is it? God, what is it? I wake up, God, what is it today? Not only do we must set our eyes on Christ, but secondly, we must pray and ask God, who is the giver of all good things. We must pray and ask God, who is the giver of all good things. We must center and set our eyes upon Christ. And then we must begin to implement daily, if not moment by moment, prayer and supplication to the one who will be the giver of the good grace gift that you have. So you want to know about the gift, why don't you go to the one who made the gift and is going to distribute the gift and give it to you. Don't go to the best-selling author. Don't go to the best commentary or don't go by whatever denominational background you have, but go to God's word himself and say, God, let me know your truth concerning what you have given me with your spirit to glorify your son, to build up your church. Now, guys, what I'm describing, and this is just two of like seven, okay? What I'm describing, I'm already making myself and you very uncomfortable. Why? Because I'm talking about participating a whole lot more than we really want to when it comes down to our faith. Now, listen, I'm not bashing or stepping on toes. What I'm saying is the majority of people want a God and a Jesus who will be there when they get up and go to Sunday and who will be there when their mama dies or who will be there when they get sick or who will be there when they need Jesus. They don't want a Jesus that they got to wake up to every single day and say, God, what do you want from me today? No, they want a social Jesus who, is, who just gives them their spiritual snap benefits every month. No, this process of spiritual gift discovery is earned. It's earned. Some things in life are just earned. Guys, that's a, that's a, that's a truth that's getting lost in my generation. There is no entitlement here. Jesus said, you want something from the Father, you go ask him. Go ask him. And check this out. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, then ask anything in my name and it'll be given to you. So we're talking about prayer. We're talking about uh, 
a healthy prayer life. We're talking about uh, daily prayer and supplication to God. We're talking about um, daily setting our mind. I mean, what's the first thing you, wait, you, you, you think of? This last week, do you remember your first thoughts? I'm praying God freezes the clock for us, brother. Do you, do you remember your first thoughts this, maybe this morning? You know what mine had been this week? I haven't been sleeping good. Just haven't. It. Some of it's my fault and some of it's not my fault. But here's the truth of it. I've been going to bed at, you know, I go to bed at 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, and get up at 4, and then go back to bed at 5, and get up at 5.45, and go back to bed at, at, at 6.30. It's just like this haze, you know, and then, so by the time I do go to sleep, it's already 8 o'clock in the morning, and I got to get up, and the kids are getting up, and, you know, I, I got to get start functioning in my day. So my thoughts the last week have been nothing but centered solely upon me when I wake up. If you want to be honest. <laughs> Go ahead and just do that now. But they've been on me. When I wake up, who am I thinking of? Blake Taylor. Woe is me. How tired am I? All these kids. All these, all these, old, I mean, just a whining story. When Christ bled for me. I whine about his calling on my life. Guys, you want to talk about spiritual gift discovery. It's going to be a whole, it's going to be a whole change, man. You realize this has been the enemy's tactic, I think, to take the legs out from underneath the church. Every great reformation that has swept Europe and North America has happened when the church has figured out that, guys, if we'll just do what God's word says, we can do just about anything. We can tell that mountain to move, and it'll move. We can go into communities, and thousands will come to Christ. And it just seems like somewhere along the way, like, like, like somewhere along the way, you know, somewhere between like, like 1700 and, 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 and 1900, somewhere in there, we, we forgot. We forgot about, about that what we are gifted with is important. We forgot about the fact that we are each a member, individually, parts of the body. And check this out. When you're at the lake, Christ's body is not operating the way it should be. When you're anywhere but where Christ's body is, the Christ's body is not operating the way it should be. Well, I don't want to have that kind of responsibility. Well, then take your name off our covenant member list because covenant members are parts of the body here. And if you can't be a part of this church, functioning member of this church, present member of this church, why? Not so people can see your face. So they say, oh, well, so-and-so's doing good. They're at church. Or so-and-so's not doing good. They're not at church. You know how many times I've called someone who hasn't been at church and they're actually doing great? It's so that Christ's body can begin to function the way that it was designed to function. Linda, grandson, tore his knee up. There's ligaments, muscles, everything all around there, man. That knee has got a very specific way of operation. One ligament, one ACL, one, one, one item on that knee doesn't report for duty. He ain't playing football. Each person, individually, individually unique, gifted, Powerful, valuable. Well, I'm not very valuable. No, you're prideful. This ain't even about you. It's the fact that you are a member of God's body. You are Christ's body. I was telling Cody, imagine Jesus Christ. Now, guys, I know this may be a little trippy for y'all, but, but imagine Jesus Christ right now. Like, I don't know what he looks like. I promise you he ain't white. But imagine Jesus Christ, whatever that is in your mind, coming into this church. I mean, seriously, guys. I mean, I'm getting chills. Think about Jesus Christ walking into this church. 
physically coming down this aisle and then standing here and you are looking at the one you're looking at the one who bore your sin who died your death paid your debt gave you new life and he said come hug me and you slowly approach him and you're at that point to where your hand and his hand are about to touch and you have this feeling of how precious is that hand of my savior child you are the body of christ you are valuable and precious you are needed Oh, you're so important. Oh, you have so much potential. God's got so, so many great plans for us. But it's going to be hard. It's going to suck. Sometimes. I shouldn't say that. Can you erase that? No? Okay. I filtered almost the whole sermon. Guys, let's, let's, let's stop here um, next week. We're going to talk about um, number three, which is engage God's word. If you want to discover your spiritual gifts, set your eyes on Jesus. Just start there. When you, and here's how you practically do that. During, um, during the invitation time that we're going to have um, right now, it, actually, David, Beverly, will you just play for a second? If you want to come up here and pray, play, uh, pray praise God, come. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to have her just play for a second. And let's take point one and point two, and let's practically ap apply them to our life because it's not the truth we know that changes us. It's the truth we obey that changes us. And so let's, let's take point one. Point one is set your eyes on Christ. So I, I'm going to let her play, and, and I'm going to give you one minute, 60 seconds, to say this. God, I don't know where my focus has been as of late. But if it hasn't been on you, Lord, forgive me. And in this moment, I set my eyes on you. And do that right now. Let's, let's, let's do that as Beverly plays.